Hi, my name is Ryan Lynch. I'm a systems engineer with AGI, and today I'm going to be showing you a small scenario um, slash trade study about commercial imaging. Uh, so basically, the problem definition is as follows. We want to find out, given a certain set of commercial satellites, how long we can see an area of interest and what that's going to cost us. So without further ado, let's get into it. Um, and, and actually, just to backtrack a little bit, when I, when I say that problem statement, you know, given a certain set of commercial satellites and what that's going to cost us, think about uh, how you would tackle that problem, maybe code-wise. Um, it's, it's a pretty demanding problem. Uh, it's maybe a little intimidating. Um, and so hopefully you'll see at the end of this presentation today just how simple some of these tools can make that solution for you. As you can see here, uh, we've got SDK pulled up. On the left-hand side, we've got a system built out already. On the lower end here, we've got our commercial uh, imaging satellites with some basic sensors defined. Uh, we've got some areas of interest at the top of that, and this is all highlighted in a 3D graphics window here. Before I get into these metrics and what you're seeing visually here, I want to go through a basic trade study and how you would set that up with what we call Analyzer. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to insert a simple satellite through the Insert SDK Objects tool. I'm going to use the Orbit Wizard to define it. And when this pops up, we get a two-dimensional graphics window depicting our orbit path. And so we can adjust any number of parameters here to see what kind of effect that's going to have before we actually throw the satellite into the scenario. So if I adjust RAN to, let's say, negative 60, we'll see the orbit path adjust. And the whole reason I'm doing this is because I want to insert a facility on the uh, Northeast United States here so that we can get some guaranteed access, otherwise known as line of sight. Next thing I'm going to do is select facility while I've got my insert SDK objects tool up. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a default facility. I'm going to close this out and let's take a look at what we have now. So we've got a basic uh, red orbit path here that might be a little difficult to see. So I'm going to change the color of my satellite one orbit path from red to white. And we've also got facility one located here in the Northeast United States. The next thing I want to do is run a basic access report. So I'm going to come up here to the access tool. I'm going to select facility one as my from object and satellite one as my to object and go ahead and run an access report. And again, access uh, is kind of a generic term in SDK. We use it to describe um, inner visibility. And so that can mean line of sight, and it can also mean any number of other things, um, depending on the impositions that you want to uh, utilize. So that could be terrain obstructions, um, building obstructions, uh, lighting parameters, so on and so forth. So we've got our basic access report here. And if I adjust the units, we can see that given the orbit path we just threw in there, it has a basic line of sight access for about 80 minutes to our facility. So this is, like I said, a pretty basic setup. But the next thing I want to do is utilize a tool called Analyzer. Analyzer is basically something that you can use to analyze the performance of the system that you've built in SDK without ever having to write a single line of code. So you can do things like one-dimensional trade studies, two-dimensional carpet plot trade studies, or, or any number of, of complex kind of performance analysis, all the way in, including a Monte Carlo simulation. And what happens when you open Analyzer up is that it automatically recognizes your SDK variable. So on the left-hand side here, we've got something very similar to the SDK Objects browser. And basically, Analyzer is saying, what parameters do you want to focus on right now? And so... I'm going to choose from the access report we just ran. I'm going to choose the sum of the duration, which is what we just saw is 80 minutes. And I'm going to choose on our satellite properties a couple of parameters to fluctuate in a general trade study. So I'm going to choose semi-major access and eccentricity. So that's all set up. On the top left-hand side here, we see some of these options that I was talking about. We're going to go ahead and choose a carpet plot study. And this window enables the user to then input 
the parameters that they want to adjust uh, in the trade study. So like I said, we're, we're going to do semi-major axis. So all we need to do is left click and drag that over to the, the uh, box here. Those are going to be our inputs and the duration of our access sum is going to be the output. The next thing you want to do is adjust the actual um, envelope. And so we're going to go from 6,778 kilometers to 6,978 kilometers for a total of, you know, adjustment of 200 kilometers. And then we're going to do a step size of five, uh, or rather number of steps five, which is going to equate to a step size of 50. For eccentricity, we're going to do something a little aggressive. We're going to go from zero to 0 0.5 for eccentricity. That might not be necessarily realistic in a low Earth orbit like this, but we want to do something that's going to give us a result where we can see the trends of our system and really kind of you know portray the value of this analyzer tool. So once I've set that up, it, that's all it takes. It's as simple as that. I can go ahead and run this to save a little bit of time. I've got the results pulled up here. The first thing you're going to get is a is a tabulated uh, result here, and basically what we're seeing are our inputs and outputs and the results for each iteration. We have a total of 25 iterations because we had um, a five by five trade study. The next thing you can do is create any number of visualizations for that data. Right now we have a contour plot showing and on the X axis we have semi-major axis in kilometers and the Y axis we have eccentricity. And then on the far right hand side here you'll see the duration of our access sum in minutes. So here's the trend that we're seeing. We're seeing that semi-major access doesn't have as much of an effect on our total duration as eccentricity does when you go up the y-axis here. So this is an example of the kind of trend um, you can expose using the analyzer tool in your uh, system toolkit. It doesn't take a subject matter expert to code up any kind of fancy, you know, trade study or anything like that. You can set it up very quickly and start to understand the overall performance of your scenario. So heading back into systems toolkit, let's refocus on the problem statement that I mentioned before. What we're showing right now is some colorized results of overall coverage time given these commercial satellite sensors uh, in this region of interest. So we're kind of from the Middle East here to the far, far East Asia. And if you look at this ledge on the top left, we've got basically in terms of coverage time at worst zero minutes. And you can see some of these regions are not touched by the sensors, what that's saying. To the far right um, with eight minutes and over, um, which is depicting, you know, areas that we're going to have a lot of visual access to given a, a commercial imaging kind of point of view. There are a couple of other coverage definitions. One other I'll show you is called age of data. And before I animate this, I'll take a second to talk about what a coverage definition is. Uh, the coverage definition basically allows you to assign certain assets. In this case, we've assigned sensors of the satellites and certain regions of interest. And then these figures of merit allow you to determine the quality of that coverage. So there are numerous types of coverage quality you can you can take a look at um, it's not just these three there are hundreds and if off the shelf SDK doesn't have the quality metric that you're looking for you can always define your own so age of data similarly here we can see uh, a legend on the top left hand side and really what we want to take a look at given these commercial satellites um, is how long since the last pass uh, in our area of interest. So if I animate this, it's going to depict what I'm trying to articulate a lot better. So we can see that when a satellite sensor passes over an area, it's going to update that in terms of visit time. And then on the far, far East Asia area here, we can see that it's all kind of turning to red because it's been quite some time since any sensors passed over that region. Okay, so hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the quality um, coverage definitions that you can you take a look at. We're gonna, we're gonna continue with our problem definition now. 
like I said, we want to see, given these commercial imaging satellites that we have, how long can we see an area and how much is that going to cost me? So it's a big, big ask. We've used SDK to determine the coverage time. And now we can use a tool called Model Center, which is uh, a, a derivative of Analyzer, or it might be more appropriate to say Analyzer is a derivative of Model Center. Uh, Phoenix Integrations is a partner company of ours who developed Analyzer, and we've teamed up with Model Center to do these very interesting trade studies um, with an integration tool like we're seeing right here. So Model Center already has our SDK scenario embedded within it. And if I click on the properties here, it's going to bring up a splash window just like we saw with Analyzer. So the workflow is exactly the same. You're going to choose the inputs and outputs that you care about. You can come up here to the left-hand side and run identical trade studies. So the workflow and many of the options are still the same. What's different and very valuable is that you can utilize any number of third-party software programs to incorporate into a larger uh, picture or a you know, large-scale trade study given whether that be, like I said, third-party software tools or any number of IP-specific uh, internal tools. And that's what this quick wrap icon is here. So you can see there are a lot of choices, SolidWorks, Magic Draw, MATLAB, so on and so forth. These are tools that are off the shelf included in terms of integration with Model Center that you can pair up with SDK, or you can include your own proprietary tool. So what we're going to do is insert our cost analysis tool, which is Excel. So I'm going to left click drag this just under SDK.net. It's going to prompt me to pick my spreadsheet. And when I do that, Model Center is going to take a look at the spreadsheet and try to anticipate what your variables are. And so that's what it's telling me right here. These are the variables that we see, both input and output, uh, given your spreadsheet. And we'll dive into that in just a second here. I'm going to go ahead and import those. And then I'm going to show the actual spreadsheet. And we can see kind of, you know, our, our generic cost analysis here. We have as inputs, focal length, detector pitch, which is then going to enable a resolution calculation. Based off of that and the minimum, average, or maximum times that our images can, can visualize that area of interest that we talked about in SDK, it's going to calculate a cost, basically what me as a user of a commercial imaging satellite is, is going to entail. It makes it very easy to input your model. If I click Add New Variable, for example, and type something generic like new. I can click on any number of these cells and it's going to automatically assign that parameter into Model Center if you haven't already done that. So not only is it very easy to input the cost model, but you can adjust it very easily. And just like we saw in Analyzer, we've got this kind of object tree that we can expand upon to choose the inputs and outputs that we're interested in. So what I'm doing is exposing the focal length and detector pitch of a single satellite at the moment. We're going to do image sat one. These satellites have slightly different sensors uh, modeled in SDK. So depending on which one we choose, we're going to get a different cost um, fed back to us through this analysis. And I'm going to expose the Excel parameters. So everything's set. The only thing that we need to do now is link the inputs and outputs together. And we can do that through the link editor right here. So again, I'm going to expand the appropriate parameters, just like we've been doing. And this is the really easy part. The link editor instead of scripting up something in MATLAB or Python or whatever it is that you're trying to do, you can easily click and drag something like overall value minimum here for coverage time. And I'm going to click and drag it, drop it on minimum opportunity time. And we're going to see this link established. 
I'm going to do the same for maximum and average. I'm going to do the same for focal length and detector pitch as well. So you'll notice that I'm getting these little yellow icons, these warning icons. And if I click on this up here, we can expand this message and see what Model Center is trying to tell me. It's basically saying your input of resolution has units meters, uh, detector pitch, excuse me, has, has units meters, but the model, uh, your, your cost model has no units. It's, it's unitless. So basically what Model Center is trying to tell you is you need to make sure that your units are congruent and they're lining up. We all know what kind of problems you can encounter given a complex, you know, mission engineering um, problem. There are various examples of that, um, but long story short, you want to make sure that your units are correct. So Model Center is helping us understand that and double check everything. So I'm going to ignore these. And the reason I'm ignoring them is because I've gone through this once before and I know what, what it's trying to tell me. And, and what we're wanting to check out here is because we input the minimum, maximum, and average coverage times from SDK in minutes, the Excel spreadsheet is expecting that number in hours. So we need to do a unit conversion here. Again, you can check these in your, in your custom script or, or whatever, but all we need to do in Model Center is come up here to our link and divide by 60 to convert that to hours. So I'm going to do the same for maximum. And minimum. You'll notice that I still have two more warnings. And if I bring up the Excel spreadsheet, the last thing I want to note, note for you guys is that each variable has a unit um, parameter associated with it. And when we input those units in Excel automatically, we didn't assign it explicitly a unit. Um, this is just a syntax check for Model Center. It's not necessarily saying that they don't line up. It's, it's trying to see um, through a syntax if they line up. Again, you want to make sure that all that is set. This is just a basic, you know, kind of quick study. Hopefully that gives you some idea of, of what we're trying to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to run the Excel model by clicking this little play button here. And if I bring it up now, I should see some results. It seems to have worked. Everything looks good. Just to summarize what happened one more time, we got minimum average and maximum exposure times given an imaging satellite in STK. It was generated on a physics-based representation, um, which we then threw that into Model Center to, th to correlate with our Excel spreadsheet cost model. So it took those values, calculated resolution, and we have an overall cost associated with satellite one. So you can go ahead and keep doing this for the other satellites and kind of get an idea of of you know what you might expect um, if you're going to utilize one of these imaging satellites, um, but hopefully we we took that broad-based problem and constricted it down into three separate tool sets to display just how easily you can address that problem. That's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys joining me today. Um, if you have any questions about this, please contact AGI through uh, info at agi.com um, or giving us a call. And thanks again for joining.